going on, friends? Thanks for dropping by once again today. We're going to be playing around with some chromatic kind of effect. It's going to be a little trippy. Really trippy, actually, but not like too trippy to the point where you're going to be going crazy. But we're going to be seeing some colors change. Like I said, once again, perfect for a little DJ set, perfect for an ambient track. Something that you'll enjoy. But nonetheless, why don't we just dive right on in? Thank you for coming. Straight on in. So first things first, per usual, we're going to delete all of our default objects. Let's make sure to pay really close attention. A lot of the effects today will not work unless you have ambient occlusion bloom. Screen space reflections on. And make sure you turn, off and turn on refraction within screen space reflections. Uh, per usual, per the animation, make sure that your default interpolation is set to linear. Okay, once we have that, let's get started on the modeling. Let's get started on that. So really simple modeling, more of this animation and just doing like UV stuff. Um, let's create a nice little sphere. I like to call this the center, center play. And now let's create a torus. Now what we're gonna do before you click again, let's go ahead and extend the radius a little bit. Let's make it a little bit smaller. about there cool what you could do is you could shade smooth both of these and you'll be fine okay so once we have that before we dive into materials let's get the camera and the animation work going so first things first let's get the animation on this torus going so press N go ahead and you're gonna go ahead and enter the keyframe in the X and Y values Make sure that it starts on zero. You go to the last keyframe and you're going to go ahead and enter 360 for both of them. And what you'll see now is we have an animation going and it's going to fully loop. Make sure you take a deep breath when you're doing this stuff. You don't want to be stressed out doing a tutorial, you know. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to pull in the camera. So first things first, let's bring in an empty. I'm going to go ahead and call that empty camera control. Go back to front. Let's open up our camera. Let's bring it right around there. Let's split our area just so we can kind of get a visual of what we're seeing here. And let's just like go over here. We want to make sure that on all frames you're catching every part of this beautiful creation that you're making here okay once we have that set up what you're going to go ahead and do is select the empty okay select the empty first and then the parent and then the uh, camera and you're going to have that running okay what we're going to do now is we're going to essentially simulate camera going around the object so within the Z frame I mean within zero go ahead and enter a single keyframe on the Z axis go to the end 360 and then as you can see well there's not many colors or anything going on so when you're seeing it from the camera it just looks like you're looking at it straight on but when we're playing around with this we'll have colors and a lot of fun stuff all right so that's the base animation that we have for right now um, what we're going to do now is play around with some materials. So let's split it once again, enter the shader editor. I'm going to go ahead and start making some base materials. I'm going to call this <coughs> center sphere. And let's just do material preview for now. I had it as like a darker kind of color. Roughness was turned down a little bit more metallic. And that's about it for that. Now here's where things get a little more juicy. I'm going to go ahead and link a file. Um, essentially, you want to use some sort of like rainbow spectrum. And you'll see what will happen. But for right now, I'm going to mark this section. This is a very important section. This is to get the colors down right. So within your material, I'm going to call this spinny. 
you're gonna go ahead and work with me here da, da, da. you're gonna go ahead and pull in your rainbow gradient JPEG right here and you're gonna make it a tube you can connect that color to the submission and then connect it to base color as well okay then what you're gonna do is you're gonna press if you have node wrangler you're gonna press Control T if you don't have node wrangler yet shout out to node wrangler for everyone everyone who says this in tutorials it's pretty much uh, already set on every computer it's just not turned on so go ahead and add that within your add-ons and what you're gonna do here with you can see we have a bit of like our shapes what I did is I rotated on the 90 degree angle whoa hold on we ran into some issues here my friends hold on all right figured it out so what you're gonna do repeat after me make sure that your rainbow gradient is set to tube go ahead and when you do the node wrangler control t rotate it by 90 degrees make sure the texture coordinate is on generated and you'll get this kind of like chromatic kind of rainbow thing okay sorry everyone just needed to blow my nose okay so once we have that you can kind of see if you look at our material preview you see the colors are playing differently so we want them to pop out a little bit more so i'm going to go ahead and set the emission to like 10 and you can see where things look a little more interesting. Okay. Now, on to the next chapter of this all. Has it look really cool, you know? So we have our default animation going. Now we're going to play with some little tricks of the trade. So bring in a UV sphere, make it a little big. And then what you're gonna do is the trick. You're gonna go ahead and press tab, press uh, control N, flip the normals. Okay, and once you've done that, you're gonna see the magic appear. Go uh, first sphere. Okay, come all over down here. If you turn on screen space reflections. If you turn, so you're gonna turn up metallic. Okay, turn down roughness. Turn up transmission. I'm gonna turn clear coat up a little bit. What you're going to do after that is you're going to turn on back face culling. And what you'll see, we have a bit more of this like, now we can see inside of the sphere, which is like really trippy and really cool. A um, little trick I just learned from, I'll make a quick shout out to the artist I saw on Sketchfab. But what we're going to do now is we're going to play around with some of the the elements here so let's go ahead and add a simple deform we're just gonna like twist our elements inside of here and we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add a little sub subdivision modifier right there I'm gonna go ahead and do and bring in a bump node within our shader tab. I'm gonna bring in magic texture and the height. 
can see things are getting a little weird. Okay. The one thing that I realized I made a small mistake with is within your settings, if you're not noticing this going on right now, within the settings, make sure that screen space refraction is off for the given material because then you'll get this. You want that to be subtly off. So now you can kind of see we have a reflection going on. You can like turn, turn this down a little bit. Let's make it a little more dark. See our rendered view. Now, what you're going to want to do now is essentially duplicate that sphere that we just made and make another sphere. And then, what you're going to do, you'll leave this one to essentially be still. Inner sphere, which is that, that smaller one inside of our bigger sphere, you're going to go ahead and rotate it. So, you want on the z-axis I went ahead and just like keyframe it and then negative 360 which is cool it gives that opposite turn and you can now see within our little bit of our playground that we have going on showing the magic here you can see we have something playful sometimes if you want to like up the ante of the reflections you could up the emission within the the given uh, glowing object sometimes you can see like when you render this out you'll get this like crazy kind of texture thing we don't want that. All right, back on track. So what we're going to do here now is going to also keyframe our bigger, bigger circle. Then we're going to move that by 360. Insert that. You can see now we have two circles kind of moving around here. And things are moving. Now, how does this get trippy? How does this get fun? This is what everyone wants to know. So, <laughs> go ahead and save your file if you haven't done that yet. Because things may crash. And let's double check everything. Got ambient occlusion on. Blah, blah, blah. Cool. Let's go into the compositing. We've done this trick before, if this is not your first time on my channel. But I've discovered some cheat codes, one would say. So go to lens distortion. Let's do mix. Let's go ahead and up the dispersion by a little bit. Click render image. Let's just get a still image in here. If we ran into an issue, that's fine. We run into issues all the time. You can kind of see here. You're getting a bit of what I was doing. Let's render the image out. Add a little jitter to make it a little like a textured a little bit. What you can do right now, we're cut we're cutting kind of close in size, so you could pull your camera out. Go to zero. Oh, I made a mistake, my friend. Go to the zero frame and pull it out a little bit from the y axis. From there, you can kind of see a little more going on. Go to compositing, ready the image once again.
Now, that's the basis of the tutorial. I'm gonna add a little bit of cleaning it up a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and duplicate this, give the magic texture a little bit of a node wrangler, add in some scale to it all. Let's do the same thing here. Alright, diving back on in. Let's see, let's take a look. It's one of these things where you just have to like keep taking glances. Alright, I think we have pretty much it set up now. What I do to just add a little bit of a finishing touch, add a little color management. Let's give it a little more contrast. When you're done, surrender it out. Go ahead and go over to output. Exports, I'm gonna call this YouTube tutorial, chromatic, MP4. Make sure it's FFmpeg video, MPEG4, patchly lossless. And you're gonna click render animation. And the show is on the road. Thank you once again for dropping right on in. Um, this one was a bit more of like me figuring out and remembering some stuff in the intro. I'm going to cut out as much as I can, but like I said, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate the fact that one, like you're taking some time to learn from me. I think, uh, I definitely still consider myself very much a novice in blender and learning, but I want to share more of just some simple things that I know and some simple little, uh, tips and tricks to help you with your graphic design or something like that so <sighs> thank you and i hope to see you again in the next video